This is a great trade because you can spend days going over what this means for each team. And it does mean something for each team. But let's start with the headline. The Dodgers now have two of the five best players in baseball, and Cody Bellinger and Mookie Betts. It may even be higher than that. From the beginning of this offseason, Andrew Friedman has wanted to change the mix of his team, but not the middle of the mix, not the bottom, any of that stuff. He wanted to change the top of the roster. And if he couldn't change the top of the roster, I think he's made it clear through the years he wasn't going to do anything. Mookie Betts is a transformative player, and you're right. He does balance the lineup because, let's go down the list, Muncy's left-handed hitter, right? Seager's a left-handed hitter. Bellinger, Gavin Lux, even the young guy, is is a left-handed hitter. Uh, The Dodgers hit 186 against the left-handed pitching in the postseason. They were somewhat vulnerable to lefties during the season. It just makes them so much better and so much more interesting. We don't know what they're going to get out of David Price. His ex-fip last year was 373. That's not bad. He's had a cyst removed from his left wrist. There's potential there. But it's this. The the really, a, a team that has won seven straight NL West and a team that only has one place to go now, and that's win the World Series, they have a different look in October. I, I would say this to Red Sox fans, and there's and social media has been full of a day that will live in infamy tweets. <laughs> They're going to put Alex Verdugo in right field, I would assume. I don't, you know, and um, this is a really good player. Is he Mookie? No, he's not Mookie. But he's got a chance to have a really good career. And, the, and they are a good team. They have a really good third baseman, a really good shortstop. They're good. So who's going to replace Price? First of all, you ask yourself this question. What were they going to get from David Price? They didn't know. You know, what are they going to get from Chris Sale? They have no idea. Now, how about the other uh, tentacles of this deal? Underrated element, of course, is Kenta Maeda going to the Twins, who, um, you know, their their offseason was not what people expected. I, I think a lot of us expected in light of them having a historically great offense in 2019 that they go really aggressive on the pitching front. I think this is a big deal for the Twins, and it's a big deal for the AL Central because now you have Barrios, you have Odorizzi, and uh, you have Kenta Maeda in maybe the top three spots. They have this kid, Dobnik, who is, I mean, you, you go and play the numbers out on him, and you think you could convince yourself he may be an ace someday. You know, that's, that's part of what we do in spring training. I just love it. And uh, so this was a big deal for them because even with adding Homer Bailey, adding Rich Hill, all this, you, you just like, hey, I'm not sure about their arms, especially when they're going to go against those guys in Cleveland with all those arms, and we don't really know what the White Sox are going to have. It's a good day. It, was a, it's a, it has been a great couple of years in terms of uh, acquisition and performance on the field for the Minnesota Twins, and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down any in 2020. Yeah, obviously, Rendon was a big, big get, and now they get Jock Peterson, whose job is basically you go out there and crush right-handed pitching. That's what he does. He does not not fare well against lefties, but last season, Jack Peterson – uh, 252 uh, uh, batting average, 349 on base, 571 slug against righties, 36 home runs, and 14 doubles against right handed pitching. So now you got an outfield of Jock Peterson, Mike Trout, Justin Upton. That's pretty good. You look at this group and you go, I, okay, well, I, let's say you hit Jock first and you hit Rendon second and you hit Trout third and then you put Otani in there somewhere, Upton, Albert Pujols is going to hit somewhere. Whoa, that's a good lineup. And, you know, just when they got Rendon, to put Rendon by, past Trout, with Trout somewhere, two and three, three and two, two and th- three and four, um, it's going to make everybody better. It's going to make the guys in front of them better, the guys behind them better. And now you're adding Jock, who is a real explosive hitter. Like you said, more against right-handed pitching. They got better. And it's weird. Like, we just all, you know, at the gym meetings, I remember talking to Billy Epler with the, the little gaggle he did a couple of times. It was always Garrett Cole or bust. They didn't get Garrett Cole, but they got better. They went out and got Tehran and Bundy and Andres, and they love Sandoval, and they pivoted to Rendon. They have had a really good offseason, and if you look at, you know, the A's have questions with all those those young pitchers that they really don't know what to expect. The Rangers have gotten better, and it just seems to be that's the trend this year that you now have 20, 25 teams that think, we, we're going to be in the hunt in September.